are the dear old London traffic, at its worst and grueling experience for the most skilled motorist. Imagine what it must be like for someone who failed seven driving tests after spending more than £5,000 on lessons. That's the question being asked today, as Britain's most famous learner driver takes to these mean streets. Jacob, what's the clutch? Five minutes in the car with me and you panic. Oh, for God's sake, shut up. I won't shut up. Such motoring mayhem put her hard-working mum from Wales on the road to stardom. As TV cameras followed her efforts to throw away her l plates, millions witnessed the struggle in the hit show Driving School. And they're in the spotlight again as their faithful charger, Betsy, is put through its paces and a few grinding gear changes for a new program about the lady of the larder. It's doggy dog here, boy. Well, not with this car, you don't. Get in the lane. No, don't I'm not frightening you again. again. I'm not frightening you. You are! The person whose patience she's tried most is at her side today, as she has been for the past 32 years, her husband. Trying to master the art of mirror, signal, maneuver has driven their marriage to the limit. There it is, on the right. Left. It's on the left. It's all right, you're going into the... Dave, don't into do the... that to me again, you're will you? Into... You're going into the bus wash, look. Stop! Stop. Oh. Dave, don't you try again! Mm. I'm telling you, Dave, I'm going to just had a belly full of you today. Over there, look, he's telling you. All right, I can see, I can see. I just had a belly full of you today, I can't take no more. This pit stop's a bit of a busman's holiday for our dynamic duo. In fact, he washes buses for a living, and she refreshes the toilets in the local police station. Now it's time for me to make a clean sweep. No, don't do nothing. Don't touch nothing. I am not touching nothing. What's them rollers? <laughs> Hello, Maureen. Hiya, Dave. Oh. Well, oh. hello. How are you? Oh, we've been no. We've been tailing no. you all morning. Nothing to do with red lights. It's just to do with this red book that I've got here, which says that star of driving school, Maureen Reese. Today, this is your life. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Now we know what I've been going through. <laughs> Yes, he's a brave man, oh. your husband. He knows all about it, of course, and uh, all the people who've been filming you knew about this. You swines. There you are. You meant that nicely. Yeah. Uh, we've got a whole crowd of people waiting back at our studio, so do you want to drive? No, I'll leave it to my husband. No, I think, I think, I, we think we'll walk, shall we? Take my arm and let's go along. Right. Dave, thank you very much. Okay. Lovely. Well, we all knew you had to get booked sometime, Maureen. <laughs> well, let's get this show into gear, shall we? Most of the traffic will be approaching from your left, but already parked friends and family from Cardiff, led by your mum, Beatrice, your brother Tony, and his wife, Sheila. And sliding into the seat next to you, as he has been for most of your on-screen adventures, your husband, Dave. Are you having a row? No, no. no. Oh. No discussion. <laughs> Not yet. Not right. David, couldn't have been easy keeping all this from Maureen? Oh, it's horrendous, especially when I meet young ladies, researchers, and telephone calls yes, in the night. I wonder what they were. Yeah, going out dressed up, and, uh, and she said, where are you going dressed up? Like, you know. <laughs> Little meeting did another know. woman again? <laughs> Well, you and Maureen set tongues wagging all around the country when you first hit the TV screens on June the 10th this year. As cameras trailed you around the streets of Cardiff, viewers shared every false start, wrong turn and near miss. Your real-life drama made riveting entertainment. Whoa! Whoa! For Christ's sake! What's the matter with you? Bloody what did you do that for? I can't even say! At the end of the test, but I'm sorry, you've been unsuccessful. Oh, no. Don't tell me, I'm not going to bother again. It's getting me down. I tried. 
Boy, me. What have you done now? You just broke a back axle. I'm sorry you haven't passed. Your driving hasn't reached the required standard. I built myself up so much and then I goes down and I think everyone is laughing at me. Whoa, whoa. Jump out the car. Oh. <laughs> the car jerked, sorry. <laughs> Okay, then, Maureen, that is the end of your driving test, and I am pleased to tell you you've passed. Oh! Yeah. Well, it has to be said that your marriage appeared to be in as much danger as anything else. Did you forget the cameras were there after a while? It, first of all, it's difficult, and then after a while, you, you, you're arguing so much that you don't realize it. <laughs> there were these tiny, sort of hidden cameras, were yes. they? Yeah. Well, more than 12 million of us watched <laughs> as you practiced, failed, and eventually passed your test on an automatic car. Maureen Reese became a national favourite. Now, we sent our cameras onto the London streets that you braved for the first time today to hear the talk of the town. It was fantastic, Maureen, and a great laugh, but please don't get in my way. <laughs> Maureen, you're a star. Good on you, Maureen. Well done, Maureen. We knew you'd get there, eventually. Maureen, I was with you all the way. Well, well done, Maureen. Maureen. You can drive our truck any time. <laughs> Maureen, I cried with you when things all were going wrong. I think you're wonderful, Maureen. I feel sorry for the ladder. Who do you think you are, Sterling Moss? <laughs> no, I'm Sterling Moss. Hello, Maureen. You've certainly shot to fame thanks to your exploits behind the wheel, and you've been an inspiration to many, and very entertaining as well. I wish you well in the future and many years of happy motoring. I guess it won't be long before people are saying, who do you think you are, Maureen Reese? I've got to watch out. Anyway, have a great evening. Well, you got it from the horse's mouth there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, your own personal soap opera made you a gift for the media. From your first appearance, you became big news. You were even the talk of the Outer Hebrides. One of your proudest fans, your daughter Mandy, with her younger sister Haley, your son Leighton, and his wife Denise. <laughs> So, Mandy, your mum's fame spread far and wide. Uh, yes, it did. I'm, I'm an archaeologist, and beginning of the summer, I was on a dig in Outer Hebrides, and um, it coincided with the first few episodes of Driving School. And each day after the episodes had come on telly, my friends would be ringing home and coming back to me with news of, you know, what a star my mum was, and it was on all the papers up there. It was really amazing. Mm. It's, well, you've just uh, graduated with honours from Cardiff University, and you've got a place at Oxford. Uh, you give your mum credit for all Absolutely. this. Absolutely. She, she taught me to read before I went to school, and a love of history just rubbed off on me. She's just great. I owe it all to her. Haley and, and Leighton, uh, the other Reeses are doing all right as well? Yes, I'm a qualified dental technician. And I work for a local window firm, fitting windows. What's it like having a star for a mother? Um, I don't really think of her as a star. She's still just my mum to me. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Denise, you're uh, planning a big production soon? Yes, I'm expecting Maureen's third grandchild soon. I just hope I don't have her in the back of a car on the way to hospital. <laughs> you could call it Lada, couldn't you? <laughs> well, Maureen Reese, this is your life. It started in Milton Street in the Roth area of Cardiff on February the 25th, 1942. You were the first child for Beatrice, known as Beatty, and Thomas Carbis. Your father, who died in 1992, had worked on the railways and then at the bus garage where Dave now works. Your mum was a packer and cleaner. And Beatty, Maureen was a bonny baby, wasn't she? She was a bonny baby. I entered her for a competition, bonny babies, prettiest baby, they said, and she won the competition first class. Uh, there you are, Maureen, age five, uh, not looking very pleased about something. <laughs> Oh, Perhaps God. it was about the arrival of your brother, Tony. But in fact, Tony, your big sister was very good to you. Yes, that's right. But she was also a bit of a tomboy, really. If ever I got into any trouble, and I used to say to the kids, 
I'll go and get my big sister on to you. And I used to say, well, go ahead, get your sister. She'll come along and thump. That'll be it. She's trying to do it. But she's very kind-hearted, warm, generous, and she's done a lot for charities and so forth, collecting, very warm-natured. Well, growing up in the Grangetown area of Cardiff, there was a strong sense of community. You go to Court Road and Ninian Park schools, and in the summer of 1953, the newsreel cameras were there when you all celebrated the Queen's coronation with a street party. In those days, there was no television in the Carbis household, so you were a regular at the local cinema. And to buy our tickets, we needed help from our local bottle bank. Your childhood pal, Malcolm Morgan. <laughs> Malcolm, tell us about those days. She always loved to go to the cinema. In those days, we couldn't afford it a lot, so all we, we used to do, do you remember, Mo? We used yeah. to go around the house, picking up the empty pop bottles, bottles, take them back to the chippy. And, and then when you the put them back the under the counter, we'd sneak back, take them again, and keep <laughs> <laughs> Well, there'll be some empties later tonight, I can promise you. Malcolm, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Now, when you're 11, you go to Grange Council School for Girls. Your favourite subjects are history and cookery, and you have always had a, a soft spot for animals. Today, I'm told that your best friend is a Doberman German Shepherd Cross who answers to the name of Ben when yeah. he feels like it. <laughs> so Dave Maureen is a real animal lover. She loves Animal Hospital with Rolf Harris. She, every time she sees his programme and an animal in trouble, she starts crying her eyes out. She well, really loves animals. Well, we all cry at that programme. It's one of your favourites, Maureen. She's crying now, no. you see. <laughs> the, the thought of an animal. Well, the presenter of Animal Hospital is a fan of yours, too. He's busy recording at the moment, but he slipped the leash to send this message. It's good day to Rolf Harris. Maureen, congratulations on your tribute tonight. You were wonderful in driving school. You were so at ease with the cameras, you made it look so easy. I'm not talking about the driving, I'm talking about the presenting. <laughs> I understand that you, you've got a soft spot for animals and you love Animal Hospital. Good for you. But I've done a little caricature, a little drawing of you at the moment you discovered that you had not passed one of the exams. And I thought I'd sign this for you. Congratulations, Maureen. Love from Rolf. We'll put the uh, kangaroo body on there. So this is a rolf head and a kangaroo body. There you go. And as they say in Welsh Wales, Diochum Vaur and No Star. Maureen, you leave school at the age of 15 and you go to work in Cardiff. You start work on the ground floor as a lift attendant for Vernon's Pools. Later, you make your mark on the production line at the local factory rolling Hamlet cigars. One particular night off in 1964, you go to a dance at the Paget Rooms in Panath, and quick stepping into your life comes a young man from Talabont who was on a night out with the lads. It was Dave. That first dance led to romance, but you lived a long way from each other. How did you keep in touch? Um, letters. Uh, we, we blocked the telephone off. We made sure at 7 o'clock there was either something stuffed in the telephone box so no one could get in. And um, when I arrived there, I'd take the stuff out and the phone had gone. It was David. <laughs> and how long did that go on for? Uh, a long time. Really. A long time. Mm. Over a year. Well, you tied the knot on June the 5th, 1965. It's in Sampson's and St. Dovrig's Church in yeah. Grangetown. Very nice picture there. Angela, there. Edward, uh, you were a <laughs> bridesmaid and it was a wonderful day. It was a wonderful day and everybody turned out, everybody from the local cigar factory where Maureen worked, which lined the streets and cheered. It was Happiness day. is a thing called a wedding. <laughs> right. Well, for the first few years together, you lived with Maureen's parents while you saved for your own place. Then with a young family to feed Maureen, you head back to work and join forces with your mother as a cleaner at the engineering firm Alfred Cook. And every morning as you clocked on, Someone else was clocking off. We all had to be on our guard against you and your mum, Maureen. He was the night ah, watchman, Bob. 20 years on, Bob Thomas. So, Bob, Maureen and her mum were a formidable pair, were they? Oh, my word. My word, they were. <laughs> 
I think they were brought to the factory. <laughs> so what happened if there was any trouble? Did they just take over or what? Oh, they, no argument with anybody. They spoke their minds and if they had any disputes whatsoever, straight up to the managing director's office <laughs> and had it sorted out. So they, and they always won, I presume? Oh, yeah, both of them together. My word. What a pair. Bob, thank you very much. Yeah, oh, see you later. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to see you, Bob. Now, in 1987, Maureen, your strength of character was tested to the full. While working at Cook's, you become ill. Because of your fear of doctors, your family virtually have to frog march you to hospital. Tests reveal that you have cancer of the womb. Dave, that was obviously a terrible time. It was. We thought the end of the world had come then. I uh, didn't know what to tell the children. We all thought she was going to die. And she came through it. And Haley, of course, this affected the whole family. Yeah, as I was quite young, it was difficult for me to understand the circumstances and what have you. And, but they both prepared us for the worst, and we just all thought Mum was going to die. Well, it was indeed to be the fight of your life, Maureen. You had major surgery and then two years of radiotherapy. And throughout all this, Dave was a great support, wasn't he? Yeah. There's loads I couldn't do anything. What did he do, apart from...? Um, well, he looked after the children, done the housework. The usual routine of things but it couldn't have been very it couldn't have been very much for him because uh, thinking about me but he persevered well you you went through and though to this day you still have regular checkups you were soon back on top form as ever your priorities on your return to health were your family and work but you still find time in your busy schedule to join a special group of friends they've shared many happy times with you and they speak to you now from cardiff your mates from the silver dollars skittles team oh not bad, Damo. You would be pleased with that, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> you really take your skittles seriously, and you're always a winner with us. Congratulations. See you back with the team soon. Bye, Bye And in their new team strip, they are here, the Silver Dollars. Now, Maureen, you've uh, always been a hard worker. Now, after recovering from your battle with cancer, you set your sights on a new goal. Can you tell us about that? Um, I was always, well, put it this way, you heard the old saying, always the bridesmaids, never the bride. Well, that was me. And I got so frustrated at being um, just sitting there. Other people were having a good time and people were using me. And I thought, well, right, I've got to do something. And I thought, ah, driving. And then I decided I'd like to have another goal besides driving, that's to start my own business. Which was what? Um, private cleaning. Not um, industrial cleaning, but private houses. Well, to achieve that ambition, of course, you had to be more mobile, and that meant learning to drive. To drive. <laughs> the family savings went on that Lada Riva estate, which you named Betsy. It soon became an uphill struggle to pay for lessons. By now, Dave was working nights at Cardiff Bus Depot, putting the vehicles through the wash, and you spend your nights cleaning the loos at the central police station. <laughs> a report now from Inspector Mike Walsh. Hello, Maureen. This is a place you know well, or at least part of it anyway. You've proved to be a real character since you've been here, Maureen. And little did we know just what a big star we had in our midst. But you're up at half past three every morning, when most people are tucked up in bed, so it must have been hard. On behalf of everybody who works at Cardiff Central, we'd like to offer our sincere congratulations on all the wonderful things that are now happening to you. Have a really good evening and enjoy yourself. And good luck to the future. By the way, we think you'll need a little bit more practice before you start driving one of these. <laughs> Well, as we all know now, learning to drive didn't come easily to you. As the years rolled by, you moved from one driving instructor to another. But we all lived to tell the tale. Jim James, oh, and with him two more survivors, Linda Clark and Paul Farrell. <laughs> Oh, 
So, Jim, uh, Maureen didn't scar you too badly. No, no but uh, <laughs> she certainly surprised me once or twice. The time that really worried me was when she went out on a test and the examiner came back in with a very long face and very solemnly drew me to one side and said, I'm afraid there's a very bad smell in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine how I felt when I went back to the car and sure enough, there was that burning clutch smell all throughout the car. <laughs> and you looked a little warm yourself, Matt. <laughs> That's not what we thought you were going to say for me. Kindly be free, that. Linda, you took up the cause after Jim. A story that comes to mind is when we did our mock test. And you joined a queue of parked cars and you sat there. And I there. stood behind them for half a reason. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we were in a taxi rank. <laughs> Good luck in the manual anyway. Anyway, Mary. thank you. But Paul, you were there for the final hurdle when Maureen switched to an automatic car. Well, of course, we took away the gears, Maureen, but it left us with the problem of observation still. Yeah. As far as I was concerned, you weren't looking where you were going. <laughs> and you weren't that interested in what was happening in your wake behind us. <laughs> um, so I went away thinking, now how can I relate to Maureen? What's, what's the secret to this puzzle? I thought, what are, what are her strengths? Um, the talking, the mouth. And then the day of the test, you said, talk yourself through it. And I went very quiet and I passed. But, but I, <laughs> I seem to remember you were saying quite a lot, actually, on the day that you passed. Oh, June yeah. the 10th, a fine day. Well done, Maureen. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Oh, and thank you. It's a lovely to see you again. You're so good, Maureen. Yeah. Well, as if trying to get through your test wasn't enough, for the last few months, a film crew was following your every move for the Fly on the Windscreen documentary, Driving School. I don't want you going down this hill. Honestly. I'm all right. Mo, it's a big it. hill. I don't want you going down it, Mo, please. I'm all Mo, right. I'm take all your right. foot off the throttle. I'm not on the throttle. I'm on the pad, uh, brake. <laughs> oh, shut up. I'm on the brake. I'm on the brake. Now, providing the commentary to the driving school series was someone who himself is no stranger to life on the road. But it was you who had the last word, Maureen. Top Gear's Quentin Wilson. Oh! Oh, it's good to see you again, Quentin. Thank you. Quentin, you may speak freely. Now, Maureen, watching you do what you did and, and, and writing the commentary, it would have been all too easy to take the mickey, to, 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 to use you as a butt of humour. But I saw you try and try and try and fail and fail and fail. And I saw you rip up your, your application form for your next test, but then within 10 minutes you were back there bouncing, saying, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And you just became a symbol of determination, of courage, of pluck and tenacity. And most important of all, you learnt to drive, and got there using a larder. <laughs> well done. Two quick sprays, that's what she got me there. Dave, you've got the patience of Henry Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you both oh, the very best. Thank you. Thank you. And still the cameras are recording your efforts. The result will be shown in a special programme. Fans of all ages will be tuning in. Don't worry now, we're looking after your car for you. Your grandchildren, eight-year-old Warren and four-year-old Casey. Oh, God. She didn't put the brakes on then, did you? No. <laughs> well, with all your commitments, Maureen, you've uh, always made time to help the community. Marilyn Evans, you taught for more than 30 years at the school that Maureen and her children attended. Maureen is the pride of Grangetown. Yes, she is, with a heart of gold. She was a real driving force, collecting money for our school. 
marvellous. She used to organise raffles and discos, and she even had extra work, didn't you know, <coughs> to pay for raffle tickets, I know. Yeah. I'm sure you were out of pocket many times. Thank you ever but so much, you're marvellous. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, a major priority has always been your family, from the time you walked down the aisle with Dave 32 years ago. The cameras were wearing that day, too. In fact, we have discovered a home movie taken by your friends, the Morgans, that you've never seen. With your permission, we present the TV premiere of the day Miss Maureen Carbis became Mrs. Dave Rees. Oh. We haven't skidded to a complete stop yet. There was singing on your wedding day, and a choir sings in your honour tonight. From Gwent, the Caldicott male voice choir singing Deus Saluti. Maureen Rees, this is your life. <laughs> Reporting the stories that touch all our lives, a new series of Here and Now, coming next on BBC One.